Well, we have this steel dossier case, and what we've now learned is this. Hillary Clinton and the Democrat Party were behind the whole thing. Every aspect of this dossier was a lie. And the FBI knew it was a lie. And Obama knew it was a lie, based on the documents that were released by Radcliffe a little over a year ago, the former uh, director of national intelligence. So this administration, the Obama administration, including Biden, knew it was a lie. Uh, the Russians knew it was a lie. Hillary Clinton and the Democrat Party knew it was a lie. Hillary Clinton paid for it. This is the greatest fraud ever perpetrated against the American people. This is a horrendous scandal. And while Liz Cheney and the others are leading this January 6th select Politburo committee and, and busy uh, subpoenaing everybody, everybody in the Trump orbit, which is just grotesque what they're doing, absolutely grotesque. And this left-wing Obama judge rubber stamping everything, and we'll get to that later if we have a chance. The fact of the matter is the media, the media, the corrupt propagandists in the media they knew it was a lie, too. And even now, they continue to perpetuate the lie. Anyway, uh, good morning, America. The spy behind the infamous Steele dossier breaks silence. Go ahead. How do you respond to critics who say you were doing foreign interference in an American political campaign? We were not foreign interference. The foreign interference in the American political campaign in 2016 was by the Kremlin and the Russian intelligence services. Well, you are British. You're not American. But Britain is America's closest ally. We have always had a track record of helping America. It would have been very curious if what we had chosen to do in 2016... Whoa, 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 whoa. British is America's closest ally. What does that have to do with this guy? This guy used information that was given to him by this Russian who was based at the Brookings Institute. Uh, he was in the United States, I suppose a citizen at this point, but regardless, who had access to nothing. No information whatsoever that was legitimate, was completely made up. And this guy's supposed to be some kind of a secret superstar agent. Go ahead. It would have been unthinkable. Fusion GPS is a corporate investigations firm created by two former reporters for the Wall Street Journal. One was Glenn Simpson. In the spring of 2016, he approached you with a job. What exactly did he ask you to look into? Two things, really. One was what the Russians were doing in terms of potential interference in the campaign, and two, what the links were between Trump and the Trump campaign in Russia. There were no links between Trump and the Trump campaign in Russia. None whatsoever. Endless investigations later, criminal investigation, congressional investigations, media investigations, three years, four years of crap lies, uh, c connecting non-existent dots, talking about indictments against a president of the United States, or impeachment against a president of the United States, dragging his family and staff through this meat grinder. All a lie planted by Hillary Clinton. Go ahead. So you get this assignment, what do you do? You essentially get your network of sources to redirect themselves onto asking contacts in Russia about this issue. It asked them to look into what was being said amongst the elite in Russia and the government of the American election. Was there one key source you had for this report? There wasn't one key source, I would say. There was perhaps one key collector. Yeah, the key collector was just indicted for lying to the FBI. And he manufactured all of it. And he wasn't the only one. Others in the Clinton orbit manufactured aspects of it too. Go. The collector is somebody who obviously works for us directly, is paid for us directly, doesn't necessarily have direct access to information, but knows people who do. You can't name this person, but you met with this person in a European city relatively early on. Yep. What did you learn in that meeting? the contents of Report 080, I think it was, which are well known to the world. There were claims that members of the Trump campaign had coordinated with Russian officials and accepted a steady stream of information on Hillary Clinton and some of Trump's other political rivals. Now think of the irony of this. Clinton 
and her surrogates plant this information effectively. They pay for the dossier. In other words, for this guy to do what he did through a few cutouts it is the greatest and the worst dirty trick in political history. And then they turn it. We want to find out what Trump's association with Russia was. And what we've come to learn, just to put some more facts out on the table, is that the Russians knew what Hillary Clinton was doing and they were monitoring what Hillary Clinton was doing. Moreover, Brennan knew what Hillary Clinton was doing. Clapper knew what Hillary Clinton was doing. And they were actually quite concerned about it. That's what the actual notes tell us that were released by Radcliffe, again, a year or so ago. I believe it was October 2020, give or take. That's what was learned. So they're on TV, they're trashing Trump, they're talking about Russia, they're talking about Russia collusion, knowing there wasn't any, except by Hillary Clinton. Except by Hillary Clinton. And it never made sense to me, ever, that the Russians would want Donald Trump to win over Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is Neville Chamberlain. She would give them whatever they want. Not so with Donald Trump. So it never made any sense, did it? And way back on March 2nd or 3rd, 2017, on my radio show, then later, on March 5th, on Sunday, on Fox and Friends Sunday with Pete Hegseth, and then the next night, on March 6th, Monday, with Sean Hannity, I broke the story that they had been spying on or eavesdropping on the Trump campaign and even the Trump presidency. And you remember the attacks I came under. You guys were with me. You remember all that? That started the ball rolling. It started the ball rolling even in the House Intelligence Committee. It started the ball rolling on Fox and in other places who were concerned. People don't remember this, but we remember this because I remember the hell that came on upon me. And that's fine. I can handle it for about a week. And it's demonstrated to be true. And then one thing led to another, led to another, and now we have some indictments that are beginning to unravel it further. Go ahead. The first report also claims, quote, Trump's unorthodox behavior in Russia over the years had provided the authorities there with enough embarrassing material on him to be able to blackmail him if they so wished. In other words, that the FSB, the Russian security service, had compromised on Donald Trump. Basically, compromise is blackmail in Russia. This was the, I mean, for want of a better word, this is the P-tape. This is the P-tape. There was no P-tape. They didn't have any information to compromise that uh, compromised Trump. Nothing. And the head of the FBI, after Donald Trump is elected, he talks to the various intelligence folks. He's in a meeting in the Oval Office. Who's going to tell Trump that the Russians have dirt on him? And they decide that Comey will pull him aside at some event. And he does. And he tells him about this, this P-tape and other stuff, which is outrageous. They're trying to intimidate Trump. They're trying to undermine him and, and sleaze him right there and then and smear him. They all had to know that it was fake. Hillary Clinton knew it was fake. Obama had to know it was fake. The FBI had to know it was fake. And yet it was used anyway. And it was used in the media anyway. You might recall, including CNN and BuzzFeed and others. McClatchy. Unbelievable. Now, there's more to this. There's more to this. Go ahead. What did he tell you? He relayed several sources, information, subsources, information that related to that event. In the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, Correct. 2013. Yep. It would be quite a tape if it in fact existed. We are coming on the air now with major news from the Department of Justice. Move aside. Move aside. Move aside. Move aside. The acting attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, has decided to appoint a special counsel to investigate Russian interference in the 2016 election. The special counsel will be Robert Mueller. Christopher Steele and his work were conspicuous in their absence from the Mueller report. Along with the investigation that was done by Robert Mueller, a separate report was undertaken by Michael Horowitz, the Inspector General of the Justice Department. 
The inspector general also pulled back the curtain on how Steele had gathered his information. It doesn't name Steele's collector, but the report does describe some of his methods. And we'd later learn he was not someone well-placed in the Kremlin, but an analyst in Washington. When the FBI sought this person out and interviewed him, he said, yeah, he basically gathered some of this information, but he was almost ambivalent about how accurate it was. Some of this information, including that allegation about the salacious tape, had apparently been gathered from people who had just heard about it or talked about it in jest. One of your main collectors he spoke to the inspector general, said that especially the compromise was word of mouth and hearsay, conversations with friends over beers, it was just talk. If you have a confidential source and that confidential source is blown or is uncovered, that confidential source will often take fright and try and downplay and underestimate what they've said and done. Right, so stop there. He relied exclusively on this so-called confidential source. And look how he's making excuses now. They downplay what they've done and so forth. He was an analyst at the Brookings Institute, a Russian. No intelligence background, no connection to Putin of any kind, or even to uh, uh, their security services at all. He was sitting there making it all up, making it all up, and the media wanted to buy it hook, line, and sinker, and they did. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.